Death in one piece. Welcome back to the channel guys. Uh, it's time for a new video and in the spirit of spooky season I thought it would be pretty cool to create a couple videos that cover um, an interesting topic in One Piece which is character deaths. Now there are a bunch of opinions out there. Some people don't think it happens enough. Some people think um, it should happen more often. Some people don't really say anything but I thought, given that, why not take a deep dive into character deaths within One Piece. So I have a neat little dashboard here. Um, how I was able to create this was essentially I went to the One Piece Wiki fandom and web scraped all of the, well, a good amount of the character bio information. One of the attributes there was an indicator whether or not they were alive or deceased. So the methodology I used for this video was I first flagged anyone with a deceased label, since that's essentially the quickest way, uh, way to identify character deaths. And then from there, I kind of manually went through them and broke them out into two groups. So the first group I classified as not during current events. So those are deaths that you know happen kind of in flashbacks or they're not within the current timeline of the story. And then the second group is deaths that essentially we're experiencing real time within the story. And that's what we're gonna do in this part one video, is review uh, the characteristics and the trends of those deaths with this Meet One Fee's Character Death Dashboard. So having said that, let's, uh, let's jump right into the dashboard. So I have a title, One Piece Character Death Dashboard. Uh, below that, I have some high level summary stats. So the number of characters, we can see that there are 49 characters that died within the current timeline of One Piece. Those characters were affiliated with 35 different groups, affiliation being a specific pirate group, um, you know, a world government faction, or any other type of faction that exists in the One Piece. And yes, some characters have multiple factions or affiliations, we'll see that as we go through. Here we have the number of uh, chapters where those characters passed away, so we can definitely see that there's going to be a chapter where multiple characters pass away. Next we have uh, the number of arcs, so we have 13 arcs where characters passed away, and then we have 9 sagas where characters pass away. Okay, so having said that, um, on the left here, we have all the different affiliations, so you can quickly see, you know, which groups had the most characters pass away. I'm sure this one sticks out pretty odd. Uh, <laughs> that'll leave us a question which we can answer when we get there. From there, we have the timeline of character deaths. We see this big spike. It'll be pretty easy to guess what happens there. Um, and then yeah, so we go all the way up into 2023, and if you're caught up with the manga, you know that uh, we've been experiencing some character deaths given the current state of events, so that is a little bit of a spoiler alert. If you're not caught up, probably should dip out. And then right below that, we have all the details. So character name, the link to that character, the chapter they died, the date, the chapter name, um, the arc name and the saga name. So that's the general layout of the dashboard and now it's time to kind of go through one by one. So our first character death is Higuma of the Bandits. So you can see his affiliation Higuma Bandits. This is the leader that Shanks made quick work of, uh, Red Hair Pirates made quick work of in the beginning. Um, takes Luffy out to sea and essentially meets his end there. Uh, yeah, so in terms of impact, I don't know how impactful that is. I think it's a good way to kind of, you know, his uh, actions led to this, but I wouldn't really rate that as super impactful, but it is a good way to set the tone of the story. So that happened in 1997, and then we can move about two years later, um, 1999, we have two character deaths. 
and you know that's being generous to some of the names so the first one we have is pudding pudding so I actually had to go and um, click on this hyperlink to remember who this was but you can kind of see he was a Marine Commodore of the 77th branch um, our good pal Arlong made quicker work of him and yeah he wasn't really in the story too long um, and then from there we don't have another character death until roughly 40 chapters later and you know hard pressed to even call it a character but One Piece Wiki fandom does we have Brontosaurus which <laughs> that occurred in Little Garden Arc uh, Dorian Bragi quick work of that you know dinosaur beat we're all about it so from there we go to 2000 um, we're still in little garden arc for the first one this is the island eater so this is a pretty hype moment and introduces us to some interesting techniques um, sovereign Kaku uh, move seen by Big Mom and the giants as well the island eater so that was just essentially the giant fish uh, that got cooked at the end and then after that we have Mr. Eleven so I really don't even remember Mr. Eleven because you know characters are one piece but of course a part of the Baroque works let's check him, him out um, yeah he was a short man with long wavy hair and who took him out Mr. Mello uh, I guess that was another one of the Baroque's works people. Um, but yeah, again, so the first couple of deaths that we're seeing, not super impactful, but you know, they kind of give a little bit of hype to the character of the groups that took him out. And we can see, um, you know, Eileen Eater, no affiliations, and Mr. Eleven, Baroque works. So that's 2000, then we jump to. 2001, um, we have these four Alabasta guards, Crocodile making big fools out of these guys. They drink the serum or potion to give them ultimate strength. And I mean, I think they had a particular time limit, but Crocodile um, playing chess instead of checkers said, why would I fight you and just kind of let them die. So good on him. You know, that's big brain energy. Shout out Crocodile. Alabasta arc. So, you can kind of see that there are some character deaths within almost mm, every saga, so to say. Every couple arcs. Some more meaningful than others, but yeah. Moving forward, we have two character deaths um, in 2002. So the first one we have is Roshio. Um, <laughs> so this was the Jaya arc, and this was another character death to hype up Bellamy. Uh, and we all see how his kind of character arc played out, but you need those hype moments when they occur. And then Zabo, so this one, <laughs> Heaven's Judgment, Skypea arc, it gives it away. Kami, doing Kami things took him out pretty nicely um, this death I would say is pretty hype given who actually did it and how they did it so shout out Eno shout out Zabo sacrificial limb so from there we move on to 2002 to 2007 and this is gonna be the majority of the deaths in here so we see that there's 17 characters six different affiliations, five different chapters, um, but they're all occurring in like the same arc and saga. So I'll go through some of these. Uh, I'm gonna skip the first one because I think it's somewhat interesting, but you know, the majority of these are coming from the Thrill of Bark affiliation and that leaves me with questions. Um, are zombies more alive than they're dead? Or are zombies more dead than they're alive? Let me know what you think. But that's what the majority of these guys are, so I'm not really going to go through all of them. Um, you know, Dr. Hogback probably has, or Victoria Cindy, she probably has two affiliations. Yeah, you can see she's affiliated with Dr. Hogback. And then 
Um, let me click here. And then we have the Penguin Trio, Rocks Pirates. So that's Captain John, I believe. Let's check that out. Uh, yep, Captain John, who at the time wasn't necessarily alive, wasn't necessarily dead. So that's how that happens. And yeah, that's the majority of 2007. And then we have this cover story death, Sukumi. So this is a pretty interesting, um, I would just say general event happening in a story where the cover story takes place on the moon, which we've yet to visit, probably will visit. Um, and not too much info, but he, I believe when Enno was traveling, got taken out by an explosion. I'm not sure directly from Enno or not, but that's his, that's his story. And that's 2007. Um, a lot of relatively not impactful deaths, but you know, some cool characters like Ors, interesting um, side story with Tsukimi, cover story, and then a bunch of zombies. Cool. So next we move on to 2010. Um, most definitely the most probably impactful current event stories. Uh, you know, what's understood really doesn't need to be said with Ace and Newgate. Um, you know, Ace. You just gotta, Ace was, Ace was punching above his weight class and he kind of, it's one of those events where you're like, dude, just get away. But, respect to Ace, sticking up for his father and um, ultimately was a death that probably saved Luffy and friends because that, you know, that whole trial of events in Marine Ford gave Root Luffy the realization they weren't ready and essentially kicked off the, the time skip. And then we have, of course, uh, Newgate, um, who had the famous last words, kicking off the new Tyra era. Uh, the One Piece is real. I think I remember reading that narration from the narrator talking about all the stabbings, gunshots, stuff like that, missing half his face. Pretty intense, uh, and definitely I would say the most impactful character deaths. And that was all the way back in 2010, so 13 years ago. Moving on, we have 2012. Our second uh, post time skip arc, which is Punk Hazard, uh, two pretty much irrelevant characters, Dragon Number Thirteen, you know, um, ZKK, JK, but Zoro did take out a dragon like his ancestor Ryuma, which is actually canon uh, given some of the SBS information, and then we have the Smiley, which debatable whether you consider it a character or not, so. Yeah, pretty cool arc, decent arc. Um, hockey introduction and stuff like that, taking the New World series. Uh, the alliance with Trafalgar Law being formed. Um, so yeah, and that was all the way in 2012. From there, we got Monet and Virgo. So this is actually the same arc. Uh, underrated Virgo who was putting in a lot of work. All to be set up for an excellent feet by uh, Trafalgar Law, cutting down that mountain. And then we have the Harpy Monet. Um, <laughs> foreshadowing of Zoro's Conqueror's Hockey, definitely possible, but yeah, she didn't really stand much of a chance, um, even with the Logia power, but cool character, cool design and everything, just didn't really stand too much. And you can see these two characters have multiple affiliations. Both affiliated with Caesar Clan, um, well, technically just Monet, I guess. And then Virgo, he's with the Marines, the G5 Marines, and the Donkey Hunter Pirates. Ooh. And that's 2013. And it seems like we have a good amount of time, and we jump over to 2016, so three years later. Uh, we have a high quality impact death of Ryunusuke, Robin's favorite dragon. I'm just going to leave it at that and move forward. Go to 2017 where we have, I would say, some pretty meaningful deaths in a sense. Uh, the first one, Jigra. This was a 
<laughs> How it happened? Not great. Taking a jelly bean to the head? Come on. But the introduction and the hype for our first uh, real Yonko commander, uh, the first individual introduced with over a billion bounty, which at the time was wild, but now, six years later, is like pretty insignificant. Um, Katakuri. Uh, I'm to go out and say this, but I do think he is top two first Yonko commanders. Um, given feats that we've seen so far, I think he's highly underrated. He's one of three characters that we've seen that has Conqueror's Hockey and an Awakened Devil Fruit. The other two being Don Quixote Do Flamingo and Monkey D. Luffy. Let me know how you rate Kata Curry down below. Toughest character you can take out. And yeah, and then we had Pedro. So Pedro, very impactful for some of the events. You know, his death led to the Straw Hats being able to get away. We saw some good maturation uh, around Luffy when this occurred. And then some events that played out later on with Wano, with Carrot, and Wanda. So yeah, I would say um, pretty impactful deaths, but you know, not the most impactful. Moving forward, we go to 2018. We have Absalon. So this was kind of a 50-50. We don't actually see it, but you know, he is referenced and he is kind of alluded to that a few days ago he did die. So um, I'm curious I'm curious to see what happens with Gecko Moria. Um, will he team up with Garp and some of the other people there? I I'm curious to see what that dynamic looks like, but Absalon, the clear, clear fruit, you know, now eaten by Shiryu. Interesting power up. Uh, Black Bear Pirates, I think, are making a lot of amazing moves. So I'm excited to see what they do. And then we have um, a little bit of a time, you know, jump 2018 all the way to 2020. And we have Yasue. So I think, in terms of in story deaths, this is probably up there with like top three. I think the moment um, that occurred after it with. Zoro and Sanji not seeing them for like six years and then coming together for saving Toko. Uh, the kind of speech that he had on the pendulum um, showed a lot of character uh, realization for Rochi and just how terrible of a person he was. Um, so I think this is actually pretty, pretty impactful as well. Definitely up there in the top five. Uh, and then this is all taking a course in Wano. So from there we have two of the scabbards dying. Um, man, Conjuro with the the betrayal was pretty interesting. Um, probably one of the more least suspect, one of the least suspected, but his appearance was wow. And then Doji, um, I think he was kind of like a sacrificial lamb, like Oda needed to kill people in Wano to make the stakes feel real, and he was one of them. So it makes sense. And. Then we go to 2022, so last year, beginning of last year. Um, we have some more a scabbard, essentially Izo, putting in work against CP0, but just couldn't handle all the Shigans. Representing the, the guns though, good for him. And then we have Kazembo, which debatably is a character or not. And then Orochi. Um, after the wonderful speech by Komorosaki, he was taken out. And then, yeah, uh, great voice acting. And then lastly, we have the current events, which are pretty fascinating. So we have T-Bone off screen. Gotta know who took him out because boy, was he lacking. Uh, Cobra, which is gonna set off a chain of events. We don't even know if Vivi knows, but curious to see her reaction. You know, the details around this are fascinating. Um, we have Mozgod, the same kind of, <laughs> his death, how it happened, by who it happened, the Holy Knights, can't wait for that. And then we have two of the Vega Punts, so if you're caught up, you understand why. Man, shout out Shaka, I think he's an amazing design, but um, while not super impactful in their own, because there's so many different Vega Punks, for the story as a whole, these deaths are probably the most impactful, like, as a whole. You have Cobra, what that will set off. Like, while well, Ace and Whitebird are impactful, it's more for, like, motivation, but, yeah. I think these are probably the most impactful 
our dash. Um, but yeah, that's essentially the dashboard. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought of it. And until next time, catch you out.